So fam, um, we're blessed because this entire month we're focusing on the power of the Holy Spirit. Limitless Power is the uh, title of our series. And if right now on the screen you uh, pull out your cameras and then take this um, QR code, you're going to join our Bible reading plan for this week. And so as part of our, as part of our journey through the uh, sermon series on the power of the Holy Spirit, we have asked several people to share their, their story of Jesus. And so today I'm inviting my good friend, Jonathan, to share the stage with me for a few minutes to hear specifically how Jesus has changed his life. Jonathan, give him a round of applause. Let's bring Jonathan up. Jonathan is Ethan's uncle, the one that just sang that super smooth, silky song. And that's how I think you like to be known, right? As Ethan's uncle? No? That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's going to be famous, so I might as well you take that title well. now. Yeah. So, Jonathan, I'm so, brother, listen, I'm, I'm here. A lot of people don't know your story. Some people, you know, as, as you came to arise and reconnected with, with God, um, they don't know. But um, there's a reason why God has, has brought you here to the place today. As you share with people how you came back to faith, the first thing I want to ask is what, what led you away to then come back and how did you come back? Oh, what led me away? Wow. Uh, for brevity's sake, and, and to be honest as well, I think like most human beings, I think what led me away was just life itself, right? We get disconnected from, for, for example, I left to the state of Texas for work, and I couldn't find a good home. I was a part of Ignite when Ignite existed. Yeah. And because I wasn't back in community or, or back in my routine of doing things, and I had a career that was day shifts, night shifts, you know, working on the Sabbath, things like that, you kind of lose track of who you are and your identity and where you stand with God. And you get so used to the haste of life and to the pace of life that you start to, uh, there's this cliche, if the devil can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. And I think that's what just slowly started eating away at, at my identity and my faith. Amen. Wow, man, that's incredible. And, and God, you, you chose a career in law enforcement, and I know that that was very challenging for you. So you are a former Texas state trooper. Is that the correct? Uh, correct. So you, you, have, you have served and seen some really challenging things that, that, in a sense, could have challenged your faith as well. Yeah, of course. You know, I think, again, it, it just, it's, I think it goes back to just like what we experience as humans. Yeah. Because well, what I saw is no different than what other people experience, except what I saw was kind of front row and front, front and center. Yeah. You know, dead bodies, decapitated babies, um, sexual assault, um, pedophiles, you know, stuff like that. So then you get to a point where I know that there, there may be a one or two few law enforcement here, and they could probably attest to this. After a while, you become so immune to it that you just become cynical to life, and you just realize, like, most people are pretty disgusting. Yeah, mercy, mercy. Yeah. And he, something happened that God spoke to you through the power of his Holy Spirit, and this entire series is about limitless power, right? That the power of the Holy Spirit is, it doesn't have a limit. What did God do to bring to reconnect this beautiful, vital connection that that we're enjoying with you and, and, and with Jake as well and, and the fam. Right. So there was, at one point in my walk, I fell back into to atheism. And I was, at this point, it was more of, a, of an atheistic mindset because of anger and emotion, right? Yeah. You know? And um, through my divorce, I spent more time with Jake, and the more time I spent with Jake, and the more that I had Jake, the more I just came to really appreciate life itself. And over time, I just started reverting to being agnostic. You know, like, oh, you know, there's a higher power. There's something out there. We have a purpose. We have meaning. It's very hard to look at your own child and see the beauty of a child and the innocence of a child and not realize, like, you know, maybe there's something there that you need to protect because, like, this kid has purpose, you know? Yeah. Um, but then one night, Jake comes to me. Uh, at the time, he was like five. And he says, hey, Dada, who's God? 
why can't I see God? Why is God invisible? And at this time, um, I had, even though I was agnostic, I had asked his mother, hey, let your parents take him to Revive. They're a part of Revive SDA Church. I'm like, let, let them take him to a church. Let him be a part of the kids' ministry because he, I, I wanted him to be connected to something. Wow. So I know that he was getting this information from somewhere. But he comes and he, you know, hits that on me. And, you know, uh, I was an elder, part of Ignite. So I had some understanding of how to answer that question. So I did my best to answer that question. And then I told him, hey, well, you know what? How about this, Jake? How about tonight I teach you how to pray, and we'll pray together, and you can go to bed. Wow. So we did the Matthew prayer, wow. right? You know, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah. And I put him to bed and told him I loved him. And I remember going to bed that night just thinking this was August of last year. Right, yeah, because yeah, twenty twenty one. And I remember thinking, man, would it would it be so crazy if if I just started to reconnect a little bit, you know, started reading the Bible a little bit more, um, reconnecting with community, that was kind of on my heart, and I wrestled with that for a whole month. And during that month, I kept asking myself. Because the big idea that I want you to, to leave here with, if it comes to my story, because this isn't about me, right? This is about the glory of God, Amen. is you, when, when, when you have a cup that's overflowing, right? When you get that soda bottle and it's spilling over, what do we automatically do? We try to we cup our hand to like catch the, the, the overflowing liquid. You can't, you can't fill the cups of others unless your own cup is overflowing, Right? So then I started asking myself during that month, like, okay, if I want Jake to have certain values and certain beliefs, if I want, because I, I knew in my head, I'm not, Jake is a kid, but I'm not raising a kid. I'm raising a man. Yeah. Right? Wow. So what does that mean for me, though? Right? How can I fill his cup yeah. if I'm calling him to be a certain type of man that I'm, I'm probably not? So that was on my heart and on my on my head, and then slowly but surely, I ended up coming to the doors here, Mercy, man. and you know, getting reconnected little by little. Amen. You're on the very journey, slowly, bro. very slowly. I can't I can't improve on that. Thank you so much for sharing your 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 journey, man. Love you, baby.